A reading from the book of Judges. All the citizens of Shechem and all Beth Milio came together and proceeded to make Abimelech a king by the terebinth at the memorial pillar of Shechem. When this was reported to him, Jotham went to the top of Mount Gerizim and, standing there, cried out to them in a loud voice, Hear me, citizens of Shechem, that God may then hear you. Once the trees went to anoint a king over themselves. So they said to the olive tree, Reign over us. But the olive tree answered them, must I give up my rich oil, whereby men and gods are honored, and go to wave over the trees? Then the tree said to the fig tree, Come, you reign over us. But the fig tree answered them, Must I give up my sweetness and my good fruit, and go to wave over the trees? Then the tree said to the vine, Come, you, and reign over us. But the vine answered them, must I give up my wine that cheers gods and men and go to wave over the trees? Then all the trees said to the buckthorn, Come, you reign over us. But the buckthorn replied to the trees, If you wish to anoint me king over you in good faith, come and take refuge in my shadow. Otherwise, let fire come from the buckthorn and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Responsorial Psalm Lord, in your strength the king is glad. O Lord, in your strength the king is glad. In your victory, how greatly he rejoices. You have granted him his heart's desire. You refuse not the wish of his lips. Lord, in your strength, the king is glad. For you welcome him with goodly blessings. You place on his head a crown of pure gold. He asked life of you. You gave him length of days forever and ever. You gave him length of days forever and ever. Lord, in your strength the king is glad. Great is his glory in your victory. Majesty and splendor you conferred upon him. You made him a blessing forever. You gladdened him with the joy of your face. Lord, in your strength the king is glad. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for a usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You too go into my vineyard, and I will give you what is just. So they went off. And as he went, and he went out again around noon, and around three o'clock, and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, he found others standing around and said to them, why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You too go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to the foreman, Summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those he had stopped, when those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, 
These last ones worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to one, <clears throat> he said to one of them in reply, My friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus the last will be first, and the first will be last. What can work and wages, welfare, and the unemployed tell us about the kingdom of God? In the parable of the laborers in the vineyard, we see the extraordinary generosity and compassion of God. There is great tragedy in unemployment, the loss of work, and the inability to earn enough to live and support oneself or one's family. In Jesus' times, Laborers had to wait each day in the marketplace until someone hired them for a day's job. No work that day usually meant no food on the family table. The laborers who worked all day and received their payment complained that the master pays the late afternoon laborers the same wage. The master undoubtedly hired them in the late afternoon so they wouldn't go home pay less and hungry. God is generous in opening the doors of his kingdom to all who will enter, both those who have labored a lifetime for him and those who come at the last hour. While the reward is the same, the motive for one's labor can make all the difference. Some work only for reward. They will only put in as much effort as they think they will get back. Others labor out of love and joy for the opportunity to work and to serve others. The Lord Jesus calls each of us to serve God and his kingdom with joy and zeal and to serve our neighbor with a generous spirit as well. The Lord Jesus wants to fill each one of us with the power and the strength of the Holy Spirit so we can bear great fruit for the God's kingdom and also bring the fruit of his kingdom to our neighbor as well. We labor for the Lord to bring him praise, honor, and glory. And we labor for our neighbor for their welfare with the same spirit of loving kindness and compassion which the Lord has shown to us. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, fill me with the Holy Spirit that I may serve you joyfully and serve my neighbor willingly with a generous heart, not looking for how much I can get, but rather looking for how much I can give. Amen.